All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create custom scenes in Embrace for the map we created in the prior tutorials. Um, first thing we need to do is uh, we need to go into our main Vampire Masquerade Redemption folder, go into Chronicles, and in here we need to create a text file. And this text file is going to be a it's going to have a dot NSL extension. And I'm going to call it mymaps.nsl. Alright, so um, we open this NSL file with Notepad. And in here, this is where we're going to designate the names of our custom scenes that we're going to make for our map. What I'm going to do as an example is I'm going to make a scene for one, one custom scene for the outside map and one custom scene for the inside map. And when you're naming the scene, this is going to be the actual name, it's going to be the actual name of the file, the NSD file, file that is created when you export your custom scene in Embrace. So best thing to do is to make sure that the name of the file does not contain spaces because um, when you're trying to load a custom scene um, you have to load it through your Chronicles file and the Chronicles file interprets spaces as a new parameter so you need to make sure you're not using um, spaces. You can use underscore. I'm going to call this my maps outside scene 1 that should be okay and um, in addition to since you can't name you can't name it anything with spaces and explanations for it um, you can create a uh, short and long description um, let's see here uh, I'm gonna call this tutorial scene for I'm going to call it Tutorial Outside Scene as a title and a long description. You can add a long description and um, you could describe what the scene is going to have. But I'm going to, I'm going to put that description in. This uh, scene contains, it's going to use fog, um, ambience, and music. And I'm going to show you how to do the fog, ambience, and music as as a custom scene, and then load that custom scene in your Chronicles file. And I'm also going to create my maps inside scene one. And we're, note the brackets here. So you're putting the name of the scene with the brackets. I'm going to put a short description here. Um, tutorial inside scene. And uh, the, short, the short and long descriptions, um, they're only for your own information. They appear only in Embrace and they have nothing to do with what's going to appear in the game when you're actually playing your map. The only important part is this here this will appear in the game. The name will, this uh, My Maps Inside Scene, when you load it, when you assign it as an NSD file in your Chronicle, it's going to pop up on the top of the screen. Like, uh, it's it's how, um, it's how that introductory, introduction, introductory uh, scene with Kristoff waking up in the convent. You, you see that, uh, explanate, you see that little title on the top of the screen saying, um, that evening within the convent well that's it. that's a string derived from a scene that was loaded and I'll I'll, ex I'll actually show you what I'm meaning by when I say that and uh, these tutorials here um, this scene contains ambience and music so that's that's all I'm gonna do with that the scene one for both of those and you just save the file 
exit out and what we're going to do now is just load up Embrace and then I'm going to load up our uh, I'm going to load up the outside map to start with and I'm going to toggle the grid out because uh, I don't like to see that and there we go get rid of the uh, uh, let's to talk about how to add an object on a separate layer and then assign that layer to a scene. If you press L and go under layers, you'll see these uh, check boxes and numbers here. Um, if you check this, you can uh, um, when you check this and you build an object like uh, let's go let's go press N here. Let's uh, let's make a. Uh, I'm gonna make an NPC here. I'm gonna put Ineska on the scene. I'm gonna put her. She's gonna be standing right out here. She's gonna face. She's gonna face at the 225 degree angle. So she's facing this way, standing right outside the door. And gotta make sure that she is properly on the floor. So now. So now when we uh, when we press L, we just built we actually we built her to the currently checked marks uh, layer. So when we click it when we uncheck it, she's now uh, Aneska is now designated to the the zero layer. We can name this layer something uh, meaningful. Aneska rename layer. Also, FYI, um, if you're building uh, something for the static layer, um, like uh, objects that are going to cast shadows and whatnot, um, be sure to uncheck these other layers. As uh, if you're building something new, it's going to automatically go. Uh, into that layer. So any uh, layer that's check marked and currently selected. So this is showing that it's highlighted and it's checkbox. So any new object you create automatically goes to that layer. So if we build Archbishop Giza and we go into the layer here, we did we deselect him by pressing escape, go into layer and then remove that. He disappears. He's no longer there. To fix that, if you were intending to uh, have an object created uh, for the static layer, you can select that object, right click, and choose Move Selection to Static Layer. And that'll fix your problem right there. Also, if you had a static layer object that you intended for uh, one of the sub layers, then you can select that layer. Like say, uh, I want, I want Archbishop Giza to be on layer one, as Arch, and rename. So I'm going to move him. See if I, uh, if I deselect here, he's currently on Aneska's layer. If I select him and uh, move him to the static layer, and go back. He's now on a static layer. So if I want to move him to the arch layer, I'm going to select him and go move to current layer. So now he's now part of that layer. And Aneska's separated by her layer. <laughs>